In this episode of Beat Taxi, we'll talk about a very divisive uh, phenomena, uh, something that I used to um, dislike, I guess, and um, got to uh, grow fond of over the years. Sports. 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 So to begin with, uh, I think it's best to uh, probably define the term sport. Uh, it includes all forms of competitive physical activity or games, which through casual or organized participation, at least in part, aim to use, maintain or improve physical ability and skills while providing enjoyment to participants and in some cases entertainment for spectators. So, um, by that definition, I think we can exclude, uh, for example, uh, pétanque. Uh, and we can also exclude, uh, you know, when you really you go a bit mad and you, you punch the wall repeatedly. That's not a sport. Uh, well, not yet. Uh, that also excludes um, uh, Watching sport, you know, watching sport is not a sport. Uh, it's often confusing. Uh, I noticed that uh, people who watch sports on TV uh, or on the internet, they uh, they often dress uh, with sports clothes, you know, uh, and they often get very sweaty and uh, and drink a lot. So, no, doesn't uh, doesn't make it a sport. So. Um, <coughs> Um, I, I, like I said previously, I, I, I used to dislike sport. Uh, I thought, uh, well, sport is just that thing that uh, I need to do at school uh, or during the school holidays. So, um, 
and this thing where you go, you have no idea what the rules are, you have no idea what the, you're doing really, and you go there and oh boom, there you go, here are a pair of gloves, you're boxing now. Or uh, hey, you see that ball? Oh, whoa, 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 foul. Okay, don't look at the ball, no, no, uh, that's a penalty, penalty kick, you know, free kick, whatever. So, to me, uh, that was sport for a very long time. And um, it stayed like that for, yeah, I don't know, 10, 20 years. But then uh, I discovered there's more to it than uh, football and baseball and basketball and, and so on, you know. Um, oh, yeah, on this... Uh, on this, let me make a, a quick point here. Football, football. Uh, for Americans, football is the thing, you know, uh, it looks like the medieval sport, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, for Europeans and maybe I think the rest of the world, football is, well, what they call soccer, you know, so, but I, I can't say the word soccer properly. You see, I, I, I'm fudging it up every time. Soccer, soccer. It's too much like soccer. You know, that's, that's not good. So, football. That's, I think that, that makes more sense anyway. Football, you know, you can use your foot to kick a ball. Whereas the, the US one, you know, football is... Can you even use your feet? I don't even know. I think they were... I don't know. It's mostly like they're carrying the ball. It's like rugby, really. It's like rugby, except you're, uh, you're wearing an armor. So... So that's... Uh, we got that out of the way. Um, so many uh, of the, the old traditional sports uh, were the only ones uh, that I knew up to a certain point and quite frankly I find them extremely uh, boring, usually. Not, not fun and uh, way too much commotion around uh, what they mean and uh, oh look uh, he's a football superstar, he's earning like, I don't know the um, salary of the whole company or something like that. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, and here I am bitching about sports again. So let's play something. To prove you that uh, I like sports a lot, uh, I'm gonna talk about my favorite sports. Um, uh, the first sport I'd like to talk to you about is uh, Kabaddi. Uh, it's uh, played, it's a national game of Bangladesh and Nepal, and uh, uh, supposedly uh, originates from, uh, from Neptune. So it's kind of like the the school schoolyard game of tag, you know. You gotta touch uh, your opponents, whatever. But it's kind of a mix with uh, wrestling. So you can uh, you're allowed to to tackle your opponent to the ground. Um, so each year there's a World Cup in South Asia, uh, and it seems to be like this really uh, big thing. So the way it works is that during a game uh, there's a raider he must run across the, the center line and tag players on the opposing team before returning to uh, his own half but the thing is that he's got to do so uh, while holding his breath when in the opponent's half and upon returning the raider uh, will chant kabaddi kabaddi with his exhaling breath to show that he has not inhaled that's that that's sport there you go so uh oh yeah that's that's beautiful
I was talking about boxing earlier, uh, and I I just don't like boxing. Uh, I can't understand uh, the fascination that many people have uh, have for it. It's uh, I don't know. It's just brutal, but unfun, and I just don't understand the rules anyway. A cool version of that is chess boxing. Uh, so chess and boxing are typically two types of competition that are at opposing ends of the, the spectrum. But uh, one person thought it would be a, a good idea to, to merge the two. Uh, so um, it's the first competition took place in, uh, in 2003 in Berlin, uh, of all places. But uh, it's now played in uh, pretty much everywhere uh, in the world. So you have 11 rounds. Uh, six rounds of chess, five of boxing, um, and you alternate between each sport, and each round lasts three minutes. Uh, a competitor may win by knockout, technical knockout, checkmate, uh, or their opponent becoming disqualified. For example, if they vomited over the, the chess set, or uh, uh, if they uh, punch someone uh, in the eyes, or something like that. Um, so, yeah, the <laughs> y y there you go, you know, for people who are not very good at boxing, they still have a chance uh, of winning uh, at chess, uh, and I think that's, that's pretty cool, so you, there you go, you got your big ass nerd uh, with glasses, like, um, like, I don't know, binoculars, that's a stereotype, right? Uh, but the guy can win against, I don't know, who's a famous boxer, uh, Mike Tyson. There you go. Well, he might be good at, I don't know, maybe he's good at chess. Maybe I should look it up. that you see uh, played every day is uh, Horenusen. It's a Swiss sport which is um, thought to have developed uh, well, way back. It's uh, kind of uh, getting a bit big outside of Switzerland too. It has uh, typically been played by farmers and uh, it was a way to settle disputes in the village or to prove one's uh, strength. I think that's kind of a uh, I think about sport often, like people use it to uh, settle other things. Um, and in that way, I think it's probably kind of a way as this is a step up from uh, just a fist fight, you know. Or, uh, anyway, so um, basically, Horonusen is uh, a combination of golf and baseball. Uh, you have a, a batting team that launch a, a, a puck, so the, the hornus or whatever, into the air with a whip. That's already really weird. They must get it as far uh, as they can into their opponent's area, uh, while the defending team must stop the puck with big placards on long sticks. The team with the fewest uh, penalization points so every time they fail uh, to intercept the ball, the other thing, win. And each team gets two bouts with each player hitting twice. That's... There you go already, that's a special sport. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy about this. <laughs> Let me tell you about the scores that I play with my dick. It's another type of FM, another kind of trick. I can 
can explain it to you now, but you need an open mind. So listen to the how, and I'll repay you in kind. I said it at the top, all you need is a dick. You can play it with your mop, if of course you're a chick. You also need your hand, with at least one finger, that can wiggle and bend. You're ready for pleasure, the game starts any time, you find yourself alone. What they say it's a crime, to play in public zone. So sit back and relax, or you don't have to regret. The goal is to climb out, without nobody's help. Pretty much like everything else, I guess, should um, sort of reflect the changing, chaotic times we live in. And uh, um, personally, I, I'm pretty happy when I see sports that uh, are kind of mutations uh, based on a number of other sports and random bits and pieces, uh, such as uh, Bossable. Um, so, Bossable is. Uh, it's pretty awesome because uh, it incorporates trampolines. Uh, it's a new sport that started in 2004 uh, in Europe. Uh, it's basically volleyball, soccer, gymnastics, capoeira, uh, and it's, uh, it's most commonly uh, played on beaches. Uh, so you have uh, an inflatable court uh, with two trampolines on either side of the net with one player occupying the trampoline. A play on the opposing side serves the ball and the opposing team would, must return the ball over the net with no more than five touches. It's kind of like volleyball. Where um, a rally then ensues uh, until the ball lands in a, a scoring zone. Um, so can you imagine, it's like volleyball in, uh, in those uh, Japanese uh, animation from the 80s, you know, like they, they could like jump, I don't know, uh, 10 meter high and so on. Uh, that's that's awesome, but it's real. It's real. This is awesome. I'm I'm really, I, I would I find that spectacular. Um, excellent. Well done. Thank <laughs> you. 
So supposedly, sports is about uh, entertainment and fun. But uh, I think what is m missing from sport is the is danger. Um, none none of the sports that are uh, that you see on, on TV and all that are dangerous enough. Um, and that's why cheese rolling is um, is a pretty good uh, good sport. Um, and that's pretty much I think one of the only good things coming from England. Um, I mean, what they invented cricket, rugby, tennis. Whatever, those are, I don't even want to talk about these sports, but cheese rolling, there you go. So, um, you have a nine pound wheel of uh, double Gloucester cheese uh, rolled down the hill. Contestants must uh, chase after the cheese, and uh, the first person crossing the finish line at the bottom uh, wins, well, the, the cheese, which is great. It combines, you know, two of my passions, I mean, danger and cheese. Um, it doesn't... If it doesn't sound extreme to you, um, remember this is a very steep and uh, uneven uh, hill. So most contestants fall multiple times uh, at quite some speed. Every year there are many injuries, um, but um, yeah, it's quite popular uh, now. All kinds of uh, events, uh, official and uh, unofficial, um, throughout the world. So uh, good for cheese rolling. Um, I think um, a Gloucester is a good uh, double Gloucester is, is a good choice also it's a it's pretty hard cheese uh, I wonder how it tastes like after rolling downhill it's probably improved uh, maybe that's how they make it mature or, well, I'm not sure I'll, maybe I'll, I'll look it up on that
another aspect of sport that's often, uh, in my opinion, overrated um, and underused is uh, cooperation and team spirit. Uh, so uh, a sport that I like is Bo Taoshi. It's uh, It was originally invented as a training exercise for the Japanese military. And it's a bizarre, uh, chaotic sport so played in Japan. It's similar to capture the flag, but uh, much more extreme. And uh, you basically have 75 players on attack and 75 players on defense. That's already a sport play with 150 people it can only be good. I mean, that's complete mayhem, right? The attacking team must uh, bring a wooden pole that is perpendicular to the ground down to a 30 degree angle. So they need to pull or push or destabilize the 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 team that defends uh, the pole. The defending team must stop them, and they uh, do this in a kind of organized way with different positions. Uh, pole support, uh, of course, holds the the pole in position. Barriers protect the pole and uh, are the largest part of the defense. And then you have interference, and they harass attackers. Um, Scrum disablers uh, eliminate the the offensive, uh, and you have the ninja, and that's that's cool. I mean, come on, take you take football and this like goalkeeper or whatever. This you have a ninja, so uh, he sits atop the pole and he leans to the opposite side, uh, opposite side if it's being tilted uh, to counteract the weight. And I mean, you gotta look it up on the you know, like find videos of it. It's it's just beautiful uh they're all wearing some kind of weird uniform they look like ninjas vaguely it's complete chaos uh some people might completely lose their shit and and just uh do random other things it's uh that's yeah so it's kind of team spirit and when i say team spirit i mean i mean the the real team spirit which is in my opinion you can't put that many people together and uh have any kind of uh, organization i think I think that doesn't work, but there you go. That's a challenging form of team spirit. And so much fun, danger. Uh, what's not to like about um, about Taoshi? That's, I mean, I've, I would play it. <laughs>
By these practices and enticements, the ancient dictators so successfully lulled their subjects under the yoke, that the stupefied peoples, fascinated by the pastimes and vain pleasures flashed before their eyes, learned subversions as naivety, but no so creditably as little children learn to read by looking at bright picture books. So yeah, pretty intense, uh, Mr. De La Boethie. Um, and um, another thing, because when we talk about tyrants, usually I think we should uh, mention religion. Uh, sport was an important form of worship uh, in ancient Greek religion. And the Olympic Games, called the uh, Olympiad, were held in honor of the head god, the head honcho up there in the sky, Zeus. That's the thunder guy. Um, not Superman, right? And featured various forms of religious dedication to him and other gods. Um, so, as many Greeks traveled to see the games, this combination of religion and sport also served as a way of unita uniting them. Um, on the other hand, the practice of athletic competitions has been criticized by some Christian uh, thinkers. Huh, it's a bit like French scientists, don't you think? As a form of idolatry, in which human beings extol themselves, adore themselves, sacrifice themselves, and reward themselves. Well, okay, Christian thinkers, thanks for the words. Um, so yeah, not everyone is, uh, you can see, is a fan of sports. Uh, I, uh, myself, I would say my favorite sport is probably, um, well, anything that involves traveling. So, I don't know, it's not for competition, obviously, but uh, entertainment, yeah. Um, you know, cycling, hiking. That kind of stuff. I guess sometimes uh, riding the subways uh, is a sport, in a way. Um, yeah. So not really the most popular things, because if you look, I, I get some pretty reliable figures uh, right here under my eyes. Um, the most popular sports in 2018... Oh, am I allowed to say 2018? Never know. Um, so number one, of course, is... Uh, is football, uh, you know, the non-American one, you know, the European football, or whatever that is, the rest of the world football, un-American football, non-American football, that's a good, you know. Uh, number two is cricket, uh, and that's the UK and Commonwealth, so yeah, the great empire of cricket. Uh, field hockey. That's, I have no idea. I don't even know what field hockey is. It's like hockey, but not on ice. I guess it makes sense. There's, with global warming, there's fewer and fewer places where you can uh, play ice hockey, you know. So, yeah, field hockey. I mean, maybe at some point it'll be like desert hockey or something. Number four is tennis. One billion fans worldwide. I mean, I don't care for tennis. Volleyball. Yeah, that's a good ten. That's a good sport. I like it. I just like the name also. Anything that starts with V, you know. I'm not gonna list any any other words for you, but table tennis and that is a good sport that I enjoy. Although it doesn't involve traveling. I think that could be a good idea actually. Uh sort of a a mix of uh table tennis and walking. Without a table, you know, you need to keep playing and there's no net. I'm pretty sure I've done that. Basketball, okay. Sure. Baseball, yeah, baseball's all right. Rugby, yeah. Okay, and I don't understand why rugby is not more popular than, uh, than uh, football, you know. I'm pretty sure football should be... Uh, shouldn't be as... Uh, it's overrated. It shouldn't be more popular than rugby. I mean, rugby is it's more fun. And now number 10, and that's, there you go, the 
I, I have to disagree with number 10 is golf. Golf is uh, the 10 most popular sports in the world. Golf. Golf. Even the fucking name, golf. Like, ah, I, I ate too much, uh, uh, I ate too much cheese. Ah, oh, I'm about to golf. Yeah. <laughs> golf. I don't want to talk about golf.
in case you're not uh, not completely convinced um, of the threat that uh, sports uh, poses to the you know modern world, well, just look around you. I mean, um, look at what people are wearing. Look at the window, or I don't know what, wherever you're, if you have windows, you know. Look at that. Th this guy and that guy over there. He's wearing a what is it, jogging suit or something? And then 90% of people you see are wearing sneakers, some kind of sports uh, footwear, you know. Um, and I don't know, I, was, I mentioned basketball, baseball, all those things. Everybody's wearing those caps, you know, baseball caps and all. Uh, I don't know, well, there's trucker's hats, I guess. Trucking is not really a sport, but you get the picture. And um, every now and then it's funny, you get this, uh, this trend where people wear specific sports, uh, uh, I don't know, pants or, or whatever. Uh, at some point bowling shoes were uh, popular in the 90s. It's like, oh, <laughs> funny, retro, wow. So yeah, it's, it's, it's all around us. It's, um, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, there's gotta be 100 million conspiracy theories involving sports on the internet but I don't have time for them I just uh, just have to look out and and see for myself you know it's it's right there before my eyes but uh, yeah I mean just remember the Nazis you know I mean and, and the Olympics you know they forced everyone to to play uh, by their rules you know except some black dude who said no and held his fist up in the air in contempt there you go. He stood up to the sport, you know. He said, no. Fuck sport. Will never, ever participate. And, uh, well. You know what happened, right? The Nazis lost. There you go. So, so much for sports. Um, I have here a list of uh, possible topics, things I, w I was gonna maybe explore uh, in this episode, but that I discarded. I'm just going to read you the list. Uh, there's animals in sport, and I well, I think any sport involving animals, eh, it's, yeah, I don't know, dubious. Um, disabled sports, okay, it's, it's good, I mean, it's good. Electronic sports, that's, uh, I mentioned people earlier watching TV, uh, watching sports on TV, thinking, feeling they're doing sport, but that's not it. Same for electronic sports. Um, mind sport, and I was quite interested in that one. I thought, oh, intellectual football or something like that. But actually, no, so mind sport is just uh, backgammon and that kind of stuff, or chess. They just call it sport, uh, just to feel better about themselves. Uh, Motorsports, and I disagree. I think those two words don't go together. You know, motor. Okay, motor cycle, motor head, okay, sports, whatever, but not together. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, there were other things. A sport and film. I like none of those films uh, with uh, with sport in them. Like Raging Bull, that's, that's okay, but you know. Um, and underwater sports, which is great, but there's not much, not much to talk about. Uh, have a quick look at it uh, yeah snorkeling all that stuff whatever now spaceport would have been something uh, it's an interesting topic but there's nothing yet uh, no nothing you know like for example golf I would well, excuse me for the word I, I would uh, respect golf if they um, if they tried it in space also no need to water the, the stupid lawn right in space <sighs> I mean no one ever listens to me.
To finish on a, on a high note, because uh, we're pretty much at the end of the episode, I, I'd like to talk about um, something uh, that I, I just investigated, uh, sex sport. And that, I think, is uh, something that is not talked about enough in, uh, in the media. Uh, so examples of sex sports involve speed sex. It's a bunch of people, and um, you got to have sex as fast as they can. Uh, there's sex race, you know, it's like a, um, how do you say, like a potato sack race, uh, but you're, you're, well, you know, having sex. Um, then there's um, sex pole vaulting, that looks super dangerous, super, super dangerous. Uh, sex judo, sex karate, you get the picture, I mean, all the, you know, there's no sex boxing though, I guess. Boxing in itself is a, for many people, it's a form of sex, uh, yeah. Um, there's sex ping pong, that's pretty weird. I don't advise uh, any of the videos online, they're just not, not great. So yeah, that's uh, sex sports for you, I mean, I would, um, would love to hear uh, opinions out there, you know, what, what people make of sport and so on. I know it's popular, I know everybody's uh, addicted, everybody's hooked, but, uh, and I know there are people who, yeah, dislike it, dislike the whole thing. I'm not against it again, I'll say it again, I'm not against sport, not against, um, not even sex sports, but, yeah, I think we could just uh, come up with m more interesting things. Like hate ball. Ah, I forgot to talk about hate ball. All right, so you see, football. I don't like football. I I told you even the name and so on. Not as bad as golf though. So hate ball. You got a triangular field. Uh, you got three teams of um, completely different um, numbers of people in each. Uh, different kinds of people. You got kids. You got men and women. Old people. Uh, there's multiple balls, the rules change at every turn, there's different referees, there's, uh, there's loud music playing, sometimes in the dark, there's landmines, and so on and so on. I mean, you get the picture, right? Anyway, thanks for uh, listening in. I'll see you on the next episode. Mid-taxis,